Weaving has been around since the early Stone Age. The basic concept hasn't changed, but the speed and sophistication have. Millions of miles of fabric are needed every year to meet consumer demand. It would be impossible to do without the industrial loom. High-speed machines all over the world, like these outside of Leeds, England, help meet the high demand. Let's see how they work. The basic materials needed for weaving are two sets of threads. The first set is called the warp, two rows stretched lengthwise. The second set is called the weft, and it goes back and forth between the warp. Every time the weft goes through, the warp moves to trap it. The threads are now becoming a piece of fabric. To keep them from unraveling, a reed pushes the threads together. Then, the whole process starts again. To mass produce a wide range of fabrics, thousands of different threads have to be organized. Devices called heddles provide control for the machine. Each one has an eye through which individual warps are threaded. This gives the machine control of thread movement. Heddles are suspended on the loom shafts located here. When a shaft is raised, the heddles go up and the threads move with them. A few hundred heddles and two shafts moving up and down together are required to create simple patterns. Industrial looms have thousands of heddles and up to two dozen shafts, all moving independently. But how does this machine get its speed? To manufacture massive amounts of fabric in a cost-effective manner, the loom needs to move the weft through the warp as fast as possible. Old-style looms use a shuttle, which is a spool of thread that unravels as it's moved manually back and forth. Shuttles are reliable, but slow and in constant need of reloading. This presents two challenges for the modern loom. First, how to weave thread quickly without a shuttle and spool. Second, how to minimize thread reloading. Rapiers are one of the most efficient replacements for shuttles. One rapier picks up a piece of thread, pulls it to the middle of the warp, and passes it off to a second rapier. The second rapier pulls the thread the rest of the way across, while the first one goes back for another strand. Because spools no longer have to travel back and forth, the rapiers can draw thread from larger bobbins. This process results in less downtime for reloading, which dramatically improves the machine's productivity. On an industrial loom, this handoff happens over a thousand times per minute. But how does the loom create different patterns and textures? A geometric pattern like plaid begins by loading the warp with rows of different colored thread. Sending dark and light colored threads through the rows, the loom can create almost any pattern. The trick is switching between colors. For that, the loom needs a weft presenter, which is a component that selects colors from different bobbins and gives them to the rapiers while they work. For complex patterns, a loom with a jacquard attachment is required. This device controls all of the threads loaded into the machine. Instead of combining the threads together onto the shafts of a standard loom, every strand has its own control system. So with a jacquard attachment, operators can control the paths of each thread into ornate designs. Instructions are sent to each individual thread as it races through thousands of weaves to create a pattern. Its namesake, Joseph Marie Jacquard, invented the first of these mechanical marvels in 1801. 
Until then, this kind of work had to be done by hand and was extremely expensive. Jacquard's machine used punch cards to control individual threads. Its modern descendant now works electronically. Designs and patterns are programmed into the machine. The threading of the Jacquard loom is so labor intensive, it's usually done just once. When it's time to change colors, new threads are tied onto the existing ones. Even for a small loom with only a few thousand ends, the process can take days. Without these weaving powerhouses, the cost of a single suit would be outrageous. But thanks to the industrial loom, we have the clothes on our backs. Up next, catching crooks and fighting fires with remote-controlled drones looks easy now, but it took decades to get it right.